All right, so everyone real quick, I just want to introduce to you uh, Master Trainer Paul Lang. Uh, Paul's a senior pristine certified trainer uh, with well over 10 years of pristine expertise. And he is the lead moderator uh, for the pristine method training room and a senior seminar instructor as well. Now he is head of pristine real-time trading rooms and a member of the elite pristine research department. And so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to you, Paul. So go ahead and take it away. I can see, you. how's everybody doing today? Good to see all your hands out there. Um, I'm glad to be here. I have a lot of slides to go through here. I actually have more than 45 minutes, so I'm gonna to have to kind of cut things short. Feel free to ask any questions. I can see your questions as we go here. And uh, I'm gonna ask you guys to participate along the way a little bit. I'm doing good, Charles, thank you. Can, can you guys see each other's questions? Like Charles, do you see other questions beside yours? Or Okay, so I'll read off any questions you guys have. Great, all right. Guys, I am uh, Paul Lang, and I'm gonna do a little presentation here today. How well do you know your chart patterns? And the reason I'm doing that will be explained on the first couple of slides. I wanna take just about two minutes to tell you who I am and where I'm from. Um, just a couple minutes of why I'm doing this, and then we're gonna get into some, some slides. Uh, how many of you are, um, just a yes or no, how many of you are, are what you would call technical traders, like you're, you're trading either the market or stocks based largely on chart patterns? How many of you are, I imagine it should apply to most of you? Okay, all right. I think you'll enjoy today very much, and I'll tell you why I'm doing a presentation like this. I've done it before, and uh, the people have just absolutely loved it. Okay, great. I actually am a stock trader and will also do the market itself sometimes um, and have the information you heard, I apologize, is a little old. I've actually been doing this for 15 years. I don't know where we got 10 years from, but I must have been a typo somewhere. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, here's what we're going to do today. Let me run through the, the schedule here. We're going to talk about really gets the odds in your favor because that's what it's really all about, right? We have to have some kind of edge other than throwing a dart on the wall and flipping a coin long or short, right? I want to talk about the hang-ups that some people have with technical analysis. This is a big deal to me. I want to talk about a test that will reveal a lot about you. And during this test, I'd love for you to participate. It's something you might be actually a little bit surprised at when we actually take this test. Um, I want to talk about then some, some charts and some things to look at that may be the most important 30 minutes you spend, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Um, we got a mic problem? Really? Okay. I mean, I'm seeing some people saying my mic is bad. Hang on. Okay, so you got me again, guys? Give me another sound check real quick. I might be good. I think I know what caused that. Sound check? Sound, sound, are we good? Sound is good? Okay. I apologize. I think I know what caused that. So, so continuing on. <laughs> and we're going to look at some charts then and what I do, calibrate. Uh, we're going to do what I call calibrate, which means we all look at some charts and kind of agree what these charts are saying. Um, I was, you know, I caught the end of the last presenter, sound like a great guy. Um, I, I started doing all options myself. I love what he had to say. We all find our, our spot in the market. You know, that's what makes it a market. Still a sound problem. Hang on, switching mics. Sound check. How is this? Good? All right, new mic. Clicked it on, much better. Sorry about that, guys. I have no idea. I use that mic every day, all day, and it's fine. Anyways, let's get going here. Um, who are we? Who am I? Um, pristine trading. Um, we've been around for 20 years. Simple job, uh, teaching people how to trade through technical analysis. Our method of technical analysis is called the pristine method. We've been training um, virtually all of our competition, hedge fund managers, market makers currently and in the past. And our specialty is training people with no prior skill at all necessarily. So whatever, wherever you come from, uh, I started with no experience at all 15 years ago. I had nothing to do with the market. Um, Christine.com, I'm going to have at the end of today, guys, when I get to the end, at 3.15, I'm going to be talking to you. I have nothing special to sell you, no deals. Um, what I want to do in a world where there's a lot of people, you know, who are looking to, to show you how to trade, there's a lot to learn. There really is. I don't doubt that. But I just want to earn your confidence here today and ask that you come check out Christine.com and see what we offer for free, first of all. We have uh, power trading workshops. If you like what you hear from me today, Go to our website on pristine.com, and right on the home page, you can sign up for a workshop. When you sign up for a workshop, you become part of the Pristine community, and you will also get things like um, free services that come in your email, great educational stuff, and you can visit us also on Facebook 
where we have sometimes charts and discussions going on. A lot of things that you can learn to get confidence in us and to learn about trading. We're also very proud of the fact that for 2013, we were nominated by the vote of traders that we had the best trading course, the best trading room, and the best letter out there. And that's something we're very, very proud of because that was voted on by you guys and maybe some of you voted for us, the trading public, not awarded by any one particular company. Uh, Greg Capra is the founder of Pristine, a six-time winner of Money Show and Live Trading Challenges, author uh, of different investment books and trading seminars. Uh, me, I'm Paul Lang, 15-year um, trader investor. I'm a Pristine trained trader, knew nothing before that. I'm a lead moderator of the Pristine Trained Trading Room, if, the, the Pristine Method Trading Room. If you like what you hear today, uh, you can come take a trial in my room and listen to me for a week. Uh, what we do every day, I'm trading during the day and um, communicating my thoughts, concepts about the market and about plays with the members of the room. Um, I'm head of the Pristine Research Department. I'm author of three classes at Pristine that I present exclusively, Advanced Gap Strategies, Advanced Management Strategies, and the Wealth Building Program. Okay. I have no recommendation on platforms, Lawson. I use Realtek all my life. I suggest that you check that out. We have a preferred broker uh, called Lightspeed, and there's a special deal with Pristine. If you want to check that out or email me, and I'll, I'll send you some information on it, okay? By the way, my, my name is Paul, P-A-U-L, at pristine.com. I'll type it for you later, okay? I do want to remind you that trading or investing, as you know, is risky, and you can lose money. And I also want to remind you that the charts I'm showing you are charts from past events, not future recommendations for today, okay? Here's the discussion points, so let's get going here. I've got a couple slides that explain to you why I've chosen this conversation for you guys, a new group today. Chart patterns, why? I don't like reading screens, but I'm going to read a couple screens here because uh, I wrote here exactly what I wanted to say. I've been sitting in front of the market for almost every minute for, that has been open for 15 years. In order to make money, I do whatever works. If you've not discovered this fact yet, fact in capital letters, listening to news or researching fundamental data is not only a waste of time, it's actually very detrimental. Uh, it can give you an incorrect preconceived bias and ruin your trading. But that topic is not for today. Do most of you guys agree with that? On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm being technical, I'm an 11. Because after years and years and years, it's proven that's, that's what it is, period. You can dispute it if you like, but I mean, to me, uh, there is no question to even discuss. Technical indicators have a very, very limited role. They can be used for scanning to filter out or look for price action, but they never should be used as a strategy or a basis to enter a position. Never. Never. Okay. Again, guys, if I felt there was a technical indicator that was the world, I would use it. And I would say, hey, look what we're going to use today. This great. But you know what? There are none. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of technical indicators. And if any one of them worked, guess what? It would be the indicator. They can't work because they're based on past price action. They can't work because everyone in the market can't have the answer. There have to be winners. There have to be losers. Your, your goal is to learn how to be a winner. And as my prior speaker said, this is part art. You cannot make it a complete science. It's been tried, and it cannot happen. If you've not discovered this, you will. There's only one truth in the market. What we believe works is learning to read where prices are really going. I know that sounds so simple. But it is. There's only one truth in the market, and that is that every time a transaction occurs, it hits the tape and becomes part of a chart. A chart cannot lie. A chart tells us where big money is going. Big thing here, folks. A lot of people feel that we're here to battle, to fight with big money. We're not here to fight with big money. Anybody know what we're here to do? We're not here to battle big money. You don't have to compete with them. You don't have to go out there blow to blow and try to fight with them. What are we trying to do with big money, the big people who make the market move? Exactly. Somebody said follow. Elizabeth, they're trying to follow them. We're trying to ride their coattails. We want to identify where they're going. And like that little leech that hangs onto a whale, we want to follow them around. Okay? That is the secret. Find chart patterns that are screaming at you that tell you where they are going. Most never learn this. To find chart patterns, you need strategies. There are certain patterns that repeat themselves over and over. And there are many price actions that are very readable. Now, let me say something here, guys. And this may shock some of you. Most price patterns you see, if you just pick up any chart, middle of the day, anything, whatever it is, you know what? It's probably not going to be a readable pattern. It's not something that you're going to be able to say, hey, I know where this is going. It's not our job to know where every single price pattern is going. Most of the moves in the market are random moves. We don't care about those. We need to find the special patterns that we know what they are. We know where they're going. That is a big secret a lot of people never understand the whole time that they're trading. 
when you find consistent patterns and learn to trade them, you're now trading with the strategy and have an edge. Most don't understand what it is to have a strategy that gives you an edge. The strategies we use at Pristine are in precise terms and can be found on a page in the manual as part of the Pristine method. Guys, all day long when I trade, everything I do, if somebody asks me sometimes in the room, they'll say, well, what is that? I could tell you the name, I could tell you the page number if you wanted to, where it is on the manual. I'm not saying it's that simple because we combine multiple things sometimes. And there's a lot of pages and a lot of manuals, but it's very learnable. And that's the key, is you need a precise concept. The Pristine method is a very unique, objective, and precise way of reading price action in a way that can greatly increase your odds of making money. But there are many who feel they know technical analysis already because it's easy and does not need to be taught. And here's where I want to go with today, is right here. There's a lot of people, and I was one of them. Um, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but basically I started for four or five months before I took Pristine, 15 years ago. And I felt I knew charts well enough. I read a couple books. I said, yeah, I get this support, and I get this. It's easy. And one day I had a lot of money on the line, and it came to me on a Friday afternoon that I had to make a big decision. And when truth came to be told, I had to admit to myself, I did not know where these charts were going to go. Have any of you ever experienced that, guys? Ever experienced that? You kind of think you know what you're doing, but when it really comes down to it, you look around, you scratch your head, you go, man, you know what? I honestly just don't know what's going on here. And that's what, that's what came to me one day. And that's when I signed up and took a class. And for me, it was never turned around because the class just fit my mindset perfectly. Okay, perfectly. Um, and it becomes, you know what I related to a lot, guys? A lot of you are responding, you can't see the comments, but a lot of you are saying yes, 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 reading my mind, all kinds of comments like that. It reminds me a lot of reading a foreign language, right? I mean, if you went to a sixth grader in, in France and asked him to read a short story in French, he would read it like absolutely nothing, right? He would just read it. But if you showed it to me, I couldn't get through three words because I don't know French. And reading a chart is the same way. I can look at a chart and tell you all kinds of things about it because I've been looking at them for a long, long time. And some of you maybe who are newer will look at a chart and to you it's French, right? It's just like what are you possibly reading out of this? So I want to show you just a little sample of how much there is to understand. Most traders never try to learn technical analysis. And those that do think that a CD or a book or even a weekend is all that they need. It's a good start, guys, but you know what? You don't become a doctor by reading a book. You don't become a doctor by looking at a CD one weekend. And those that take it more seriously often get caught in one of several hang-ups. What are the hang-ups you could possibly have? Well, the trader may not have learned it properly, right? You, you take a quick class, you try it, it doesn't work, you go, well, it didn't work. You may have learned it but forgotten it, right? 85% of what you learn is forgotten in three days, even if you're smart and even if what you learned was well presented. Do you realize that? They may not have applied it right, right? Or the trade doesn't work, why? If you take a trade and it doesn't work, how do you know if you goofed, if you have the method wrong, if the method doesn't work, or maybe it's just one of those trades that are supposed to not work? Yes, some trades are supposed to not work. We play odds. There is no trader, there is no strategy that guarantees 100% odds. It's, it's, it's not what I even want. Uh, we play odds. We're looking to try to get enough trades right that the money we make on the trades overshadows the money we lose on the losing trades. And that's what's important to understand. If you did it wrong, was it just one of those trades that didn't work? How do you know? Who tells you all these things, right? How do you know what the truth is? And for those who make it this far, most never get beyond a certain level. For those who do understand technical analysis at some point, many of them get hung up on a certain one concept. They don't realize how much there is to learn, how good the Pristine method could be for them. Most get stuck on one concept or one or two very, very simple things. And that's what I want to look at right now They get stuck in a vacuum. I want to give you guys a little test here. And this will really, I think, um, open everyone's eyes to something because I think you'll be amazed at how accurate I will be in predicting something here. Um, I'd like you all to answer this question just off the top of your head. Okay? You're driving down the road in a car. I mean, in a, in a vehicle. We're talking about we're out in the street now. So we're driving down the road in some kind of vehicle, and you run into an obstacle. Do you get through it or not, everybody? Yes or no? But do you get through it or not? You're driving down the road. You run into an obstacle. Do you get through it or not? And I'll read off the answers since you can't see them. Yes, no. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Go back and around somehow. Yes, 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 yes. Go around it. You know, no. Yes, yes, no. Yes, yes, no. Depends. Depends, size of the object, plow through it. Okay. All right. A lot of answers there, more than I can read. Thank you for your answers. Um, let's proceed. I said yes or no. 
Okay. You all answered one of the following, either yes or no. Now, if you answered yes or no, doesn't matter which one, those are not the best answers. Didn't matter if it was yes or no, neither one's the best answer. If you answered it depends, which a lot of you did, here's the next question. Now, those of you who answered it depends, I have another question for you. It depends on what? It depends on what you're driving, or it depends on what the obstacle is. Go ahead and go. Drive D or O if you want. D for what you're driving, O for obstacle. If you said it depends, it has to depend on something. Does it depend on what you're driving, or does it depend on what you know, somebody said? Both obstacle, obstacle, both, both obstacle, driving, both obstacle, 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 obstacle both, both obstacle, both in speed, both. Well, speed would be part of what you're driving. So I mean, that's you know, it's part of the whole, you know. What you're driving, what you're hitting. Okay, both, 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 both. Okay, all right. Very good. So here's my analysis, and I'm going to make a little prediction. I'd like to see how close I was here. If you said it depends on what the obstacle is, now all of you think, those of you that said obstacle, and most of you said obstacle. Most of you said obstacle. The next most common answer was both, and that's a wimpy answer. The next most common answer was what you're driving. If you said obstacle, I'm going to give you I'm going to tell you who you are, and you tell me generally true or false. And don't be afraid to say false. I won't be offended because I'm usually 90% accurate in this. If you said the obstacle, you probably like to play breakouts. You probably like new 52 or all-time highs. You fear or at least always react to all resistance areas, and you probably, as this is pushing it, have less patience than average. How did I do for all of you that said obstacle? True or false, basically? Yes or no? Did I do fairly well in evaluating? And remember, <laughs> this is a long push to do this. Okay, I got, I got a no, a yes, a no, a yes, 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 true. <laughs> You're right, Hilton. I was, I was joking because actually he's saying that both is not, is a, uh, uh, is not a wimpy answer. And you're right, but in terms of me trying to nail down an answer, <laughs> that's why I said that. True, true, true. All right, very good. So I got about, I'm going to estimate I got 80%. There are only two of you that said I didn't nail you, and the rest of you said that did. Um, let's look at the rest of you. The minority of you said it depends on what you're driving only. The minority of you said that. But if you did say that, and there's probably only a handful of you, but tell me how I did with you guys. You probably like pullback entries more than average. You likely respect the power of higher time frames. You probably like gaps or wide range bars, and you probably, this is pushing at more patience than average. True or false for those of you who said that. I got yes, yes, true, true, true. This one's usually easier. I'm usually close to 100% on this one. Because if you had, the, if you had the, the nerve to say it depends on what you're driving, you're, spe you're specific. And by the way, I'm this type of person. My answer is it depends what you're driving. I'm, it depends on both, of course. But the reason I didn't give you that as an option because I wanted to, to uh, get into that. Was that, that should have been somewhat amazing to you that I could predict it that well. I want to go into now why some of you said that and said those answers and what this all means basically. Um, what I want to do here um, in the next few slides is show you what is possible with technical analysis. Not necessarily teach you because obviously that's ours, but to show you what's possible. I put Excel here because I, just real quickly, a long, long, long time ago I went to a class in Excel, a, literally a physical walk-in class. And I started taking all kinds of notes about what Excel was and writing down all these things you can do, you know, hit F7 and hit this and hit that. And about 10 minutes into it, I realized this is not what I should be doing. I stopped writing and I just sat and listened because what I started taking notes on was not how to do things, but what was possible to do. And that's what I want you to think about a little bit, what technical analysis can actually do for you. There are many who feel they don't need to know technical analysis because it's easy and does not need to be taught. Let's take a look at how easy it is. What's your favorite technical term, everybody? You, you say technical analysis. What's the first thing you think of? So everybody throw out one term for me. Technical analysis, you know, except for chart. <laughs> Stochastics, moving average, trend is what you guys are saying. I'm also putting the screen up some stuff that I wrote. Exponential moving averages, volatility, MACD, support and resistance trends, support and resistance MACD, price action. A lot, a lot of MACDs in here. Volume profile, momentum, support and resistance, TTM squeeze, support and resistance, highs and lows, stochastics. Okay. 
So here is uh, a bunch of these things you guys mentioned. I put here support and resistance, supply and demand, retracement, extension, multiple, MTF is multiple time frames. It's a term we use at Pristine. Gaps, nobody really mentioned gaps. Maybe some of you don't do that. Market correlation, right? Market correlation. Moving averages, there's moving average. Um, by the way, I told you um, I am not at all a fan of technical indicators as it comes to actually using them to, to base entries. Um, there's one, ex well, there are no exceptions. What I do keep on my chart though is a, is a um, moving average, 20, 40, um, 200 simple moving averages. But we have a very specific purpose for them. They're for trend analysis, and it wouldn't really matter that much which they were or if they're exponential or not. None of that really matters because they're not magic. Um, they're, they're not actual support. They're not triggers ever. They should never be because they, they just don't work like that. Um, but that's, if you look at my charts, and you'll, you'll see one soon, um, I have nothing on there but candlestick prices, volume, and a couple of moving averages. That's all I have on there. I have never had any kind of technical indicator like MACD or stochastics on there in forever because they are only representations of past price action that are made to create a new line going in the future. And it doesn't help me see anything more than what's on the chart already. Let's talk about one of them, a very simple topic, support and resistance, right? Everybody most of you understand support and resistance. It's simple, right? Somebody tell me about support and resistance. Just give me a quick blurb about it. Anybody, just real quick. What, what, what is our rule about support and resistance? If you're going to teach somebody to trade and they say, hey, how do I use support and resistance to trade? What do you do? Price breakout. So you're saying above resistance, prices break out. It's random. Okay, very good, Tracy. I like your answer, Tracy, because you're right. 95% of the time it is random. You're absolutely right. And a lot of it, Tracy, as I'm going to show you here, is maybe it's not random so much, but we don't understand it properly. Okay, bottom and top. Okay, so you're saying that there's support at the bottom, resistance to the top, Robin, and you go back and forth. Past support becomes resistance. That's actually a form of, of, of minor uh, resistance, Rick, which is exactly what minor resistance is. That's a beautiful concept you gave there. Support price is a temporary bottom. Okay. All right. All right. Great, great, great. All right. So... Uh, above, you know, in between support and resistance, you stay neutral. Then above resistance is bullish, under support is bearish. Right? Simple. Right? So let's just move on to the next topic because that was so simple, right? Well, before we move on, let's just let's just take a look at a couple slides to make sure we're all in total agreement about how simple support and resistance is. Okay? Here's a chart, and I want you to look way over on the right side of the chart. Here. I think you can see my arrow. Okay? If you look over on the right side of the chart, you notice. If we were to um, look at the right part of this chart, look at the last week or so of trading, this is a daily chart, um, where would you say resistance is? If we start on the right side of the chart, where is resistance? If we're right here, where's our first area we need to deal with? Okay, 20, 23, 20, 20, okay, so I, I think most of you are saying like, So most of you are saying like over this bar right here. So most of you are saying over this bar right here would be would be the top of resistance, right? So the question is, what if what if the stock were to open here? What if the stock were to open here distinctly at least like 50 cents below the high of that third red bar? Would we be under resistance, over resistance? Would we be bullish or bearish? Just based on the concepts you've taught me so far. We'd be under resistance. I'd have to agree with that just as a ma matter of physically looking at the chart. Resistance is here under. Okay. So we'd, so we'd be bearish because we're under resistance, right? But the funny thing is, this is an actual play that I did recently. And at the moment the stock opened, I was extremely bullish. The stock opened there, and that's what it did. It opened on the low of the day, and it screamed higher, right? Now, some of you are saying, well, bullish, trap two days of excellent comments, Steve, trap two days. You can see what I'm getting at already is that resistance does not operate in a vacuum. Correct, everybody? Let me ask you a couple things, just eye-opening stuff. Depends, resistance can be priced all Well, technically, I mean, Jack, we all use our words differently. I perceive that we teach that. Resistance cannot be found in a moving average or in a trend line or a channel. 
Uh, subjective resistance can, meaning it's self-fulfilling prophecy that, that people think it's there, but actual price resistance can only be found in prices, in actual price there, because that's where traders actually live. The rest of it is self-fulfilling prophecy, which has some meaning, but you have to be careful. If self-fulfilling prophecy conflicts with the real chart, um, the trade's going to go against you. But let me ask you a couple of questions. You know, we all, when I asked you about support and resistance, it was all above, below, support, resistance, blah, 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 right? Well, let me ask you something. Are there different types of resistance? Like this is high of this bar is, is what we call a single pivot high. Are there different forms of resistance? In other words, if you're driving down the road and you run into an obstacle, could that obstacle be a wood fence, a paper fence, a brick wall, a steel wall? Are there different forms of resistance, guys? Nobody's answering that one. Only one person said yes. Are there different forms of resistance? I would say yes, partially. The answer is absolutely positively, absolutely positively, absolutely positively. There are there are hugely different areas of resistance, and whether or not you're in an uptrend, downtrend, whether you've broken prior resistance or not, we have what we call square tops, round tops, failed pattern tops. All these different things make different resistance areas, and this one here is the weakest of all. Let me ask you another one. Does the length of time backwards make a difference? In other words, does it matter if it was two days ago or 20 days ago or two years ago? Does the time make a difference, everybody? Yeah, absolutely. 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 Um, Jack, you were saying that um, what, do you think moving aver what do you think moving averages and trend lines are based on in price? Of, of course. And, and that's why they become subjective. But my point is with some resistance or support, Jack, that there, we, we are guaranteed there will be buyers there. That's not the case for the moving average. It's an area that has worked in the past. It's an area that mathematically is average prices. Um, and there's a lot of good things we do with that. We use moving averages. We use trend lines. I'm just pointing out the difference between actual support where we know there's a buyer and subjective support where there may be buyers. That's all. So there are all these different things that figure into resistance. And actually, there's a list of 10 or 12 of them that all will affect. And when you look at this chart on balance, this is a very, very bullish area for this to open at. This is a very, very bullish area for the stock to open at. So I'm just trying to point out that the simple concepts that a lot of times are used by newer traders um, don't work in a vacuum. You can't just say if you're below some price level somewhere that it's necessarily bearish. Maybe that's one little thing tipping bearish on a scale of, of 15 things you're looking at. But in the end analysis, it maybe becomes almost irrelevant. Let's do the same concept here. Um, let's, let's take a different look at uh, support. You guys are giving me tons of questions, which I appreciate, but I do have to keep moving on a little bit, so I'm going to keep going here. And by the way, you can always feel free to email me if you want. I'm paul at pristine.com. I'll gladly entertain your questions or even look at a trade or two if you want to. Starting at the right-hand chart, where is resistance? Let's look at this other one here real quick. So we're at resistance. So if we were to gap right here, and this is going to be above the topping tail, above all these bars, what would that be, guys? Would that be bullish or would it be bearish? Jack, we pay attention to them. We pay attention again. I have moving. I have two moving averages on my chart. We pay attention to them, but we understand the difference between self-fulfilling prophecy and actual price support because it matters how you look at it sometimes. So we cleared this whole area up in here. We cleared all that, right? So based on a simple analysis of support and resistance, we cleared all the resistance on the chart, and therefore we should be going higher. But yet this stock was played bearishly this day. And it turned red for a good part of the day. Exactly. Some of you saying exhaustion gap probably. You're right. We had some both long-term and short-term exhaustion, right, which made this collapse initially. It may go higher eventually. But this is actually looked at as a short even though it cleared resistance. So, again, just pointing some of these things out. Let me ask you this one, too. Where is resistance here, everybody? Is it one? Give me a one for here or a two for here. Where is resistance? One at the top of the base, two at the top of the top and tail. One or two? One, top of the base, two. And you guys are saying one, 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 two, one, one, two, 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 one, one, two, one, 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 two, two, one, 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 two, both, one, two, 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 which is the bigger resistance here if you're saying both. You've got to pick one or the other. You said about 60% one and about 20 and about 40% two. And again, this is a real concept. And in this case, the the more correct answer, if you will, sure there's resistance at both, but the more correct answer is, is one. Clearing this area in here is a very significant clearing 
of, of a big army, if you will. And there's a half dozen soldiers left up here that aren't probably going to make a difference. There's a whole lot of reasons for understanding that, but um, all kinds of things that, in other words, you would be very bullish clearing this area. You wouldn't have to wait for that tail. Because if you start waiting for everything, pretty soon you're only buying things at 52-week highs, and that doesn't work well, as you may have noticed. Okay. Quick question for you guys also. If you look to the left and you, and you have to play into something, if you're taking a trade and there is some price to the left, this is what we call a topping tail. If you have to play into something, do you want it to be a topping tail or not? Everybody, yes or no? If you're bullish and you're long and you look to your left, do you want it to be a topping tail? Mike Murray, rather incredible. I don't think you've got a wrong answer. Well, when I say right or wrong, I'm basing it on what, on what I believe. And actually, this is the tricky one. Yes, we do. We, we do want it to be a topping tail. Why? Because if there's something there, a, a topping tail is a single pivot. Is the topping tail bearish? Sometimes, at the time it happens, but this pullback is a result of the topping tail. Now that we're back attacking it, we want it to be a topping tail because anything else will be worse. A square top, a round top, a multiple high top, a fa failure top, all those will be worse than a single topping tail. If you have to run into something, you want that one guy standing up there all by himself, right? Yeah, you're right, Rick. You've been taught a long tail is a reversal signal. It is. It already reversed. See, it caused this, and that's good. But my question is, now that we're back attacking it, what do you want it to be? And you want it to be a tail. Trust me, you want it to be a tail, as opposed to any other pattern that you have up there. One more important resistance. And here I just want to show you guys again, you, you seem like an extremely knowledgeable group of traders, more so than any group I've talked to you know, outside of Christine ever. Uh, you guys have had a lot of great comments. I haven't been able to read them all. So let's, let's take a vote on this one. We're going to gap. This is a daily chart, and we're going to gap. And you want to be bullish. Where do you want the stock to gap to? Do you want it to gap to A, to B, or to C? Do you want to clear just barely A, B, or C? Everybody vote. A, B, or C. Because you're going to find on this chart, I'm going to give you the answers, B, C, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, C, 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 B, A, C, A, B, A, 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 B, A, C, A, A, C. Um, you can see, I can't even say what the most popular answer was, right? Now, guys, if we all were in agreement about everything, we all shouldn't. If support and resistance were easy, is my point. Yeah, is that your final answer, really, Carl? If... If we all, if this were easy, if understanding resistance was a piece of cake, we'd all have the right answer because you all would have read, you know, the book that told you what resistance is. We'd all agree. You guys are completely like one third, one third, one third between A, B, and C, right? And there are different opportunities at each level. They're all good gaps. C obviously clears everything, and it's nice, but it becomes a big gap, right? Personally. Personally, I like A. I like A. Because I know if I clear A, I'm going to clear the rest. And there's another reason that many people rarely think of. While C, in a sense, may be the most powerful long term, and many of you probably don't think about this unless you actually trade these in the morning, the problem with C is I don't know if it may go down. Thank you, Michael. I don't know if it may go down first. Does there, did anybody relate to what I'm saying? If I open at A, I know it's, it's, it's either going to fail or it's going to go higher, right? If I open at C, the problem is it may try to go higher than come in, try to go higher and come in, and then go higher later in the day. So it becomes a problem to me because I don't, I'm not as clear as when to enter. So while sometimes C, may, you may argue, is clearing the most stuff, which it is, if A is 90% as accurate in what it's clearing but yet gives me 100% better entry, I prefer A usually, but I'm the guy who cares about what I'm driving, not what the fence looks like. Can you relate to that analogy now? If you like A, and here's a 100% analogy, that first question I gave you, if you said it matters what you're driving, you picked A, right? If you said that you care about what the obstacle is, you pick C, correct, everybody? 100% correlation will be on that, correct? If not, then you lied to me. 
neither one is a wrong answer here. It's a matter of preference necessarily. This, this stock happened to open at C and take off. Personally, I'd be more bullish on something at A. You said both. <laughs> Here's another beautiful one. I don't think it'll be much in the technical analysis part of this. Um, and by the way, I'm, I'm not going to get through all the slides quite. I had way too many slides here, but let's go through what we can. I said uh, one of the things nobody mentioned were trends, really, right? Are, are trends a big part of technical analysis, guys? Are trends a big part of technical analysis? Yeah, actually, there's a saying out there. Most sayings you hear in trading are bad. They're, they're, they're sayings that are brought about by traders who can't make it, so they make up stupid sayings. But the trend is your friend actually is a great saying. Um, and it is one of the, the true staples in trading. Trends do tend to last, and you should not uh, play against trends without very, very good cause. Okay? So at the green dot, this is an intraday pattern, is a day trade. At the green dot, I'm going to say that we all agree we're in an uptrend, correct? We all agree we're in an uptrend. I'm going to assume that because I don't see anybody could say we're not in an uptrend at the green dot, but feel free to disagree if you want to. So let's say we want to exit when the trend ends, and let's say that's our management concept, okay? Well, that's what we're talking about, George, when it breaks below what? Let's say we want to exit when the trend ends. When is it that you would exit? If you, in other words, if you're managing and you're saying, okay, I'm going to take profits of this, and I want to take profits when the trend ends, which is what a very common thing to do would be, when would the trend end? When would you say, okay, time to get out? Would you say right here it's time to get out? Well, across the moving average way back here. And again, the moving average, I, I love moving averages, Robin. I'm like probably, you know, number one in pristine for loving moving averages, but I can't agree with that because crossing moving average is not going to be a good answer. It's not going to be an accurate answer, right? Would this be a good time to get out? Well, again, when this trade, when I was in this trade, I let this happen because this does not necessarily break the trend. It technically breaks that number. I understand that. But guys, how many times are you in something? Give me a show of hands. How many times are you in something and you get out because you got stopped out? And shortly after you got stopped out, you look back and you say, that exit was exactly where I should have gotten in, right? I mean, it's bad enough to get stopped out. But then to get stopped out exactly where you should have gotten in, see, this is actually a long and it is, and I played it that way that day, even though it, it broke across this pivot. And there's a lot of reasons for that. It has to do with multiple time frame analysis. It has to do with five-minute charts. It has to do with lunch. It has to do with the pattern which evolved to take you down to this area. All these different things. This actually turns out to be what you might call a little shakeout and something that you should be using to go to go long, right? Hey, Robin, e email me and tell me how that's working for you. I understand the concept, but you need to couple that with a couple other things or you're going to be randomly stopping out all the time. Okay? Um, George, I just ran through like four reasons why, and I have to apologize. You know, again, I'm, I'm trying to show you the depth there is to technical analysis. So rather than taking one slide and going through huge things about it, but again, it's a concept of multiple time frames that on other time frames this was not a break of trend, that five-minute charts never last through lunch, never. Rarely do they ever last through lunch. And the way we approach this area, I would never get out because of a technical break of one penny. Okay. All right, guys. I have two minutes left, and I had a few more slides here, and I unfortunately, <laughs> I just brought way too many slides. I went as fast as I could, guys. I just brought way too many slides for today. We, we could, I want to talk about these quote-unquote breakout patterns and how they become very, very close to being sideways patterns. Um, you guys, and I have to apologize too, you guys have just a ton of beautiful questions. I tried to pick some out here and there, but I just simply can't get to all of them. You, if you got the idea of this last slide, it was, you know, it's a huge concept as well, the concept of what a breakout really is and how most people are buying breakouts when you actually should be shorting the stock, a very common thing to do. But unfortunately, I have like two minutes. Well, you know what, I have, yeah, I have like, like I told you, I'm not selling you anything, so when I'm done, I'm done here. So I just want one minute to say goodbye. So just, what I just want to show you here on the slide, guys, real quickly, is I'd like to show you, is this a breakout play right here? Is this a breakout? And a lot of people say, yes, that's a breakout, right? And, and, and they look at it going long. Say, okay, breakout, breakout. Now, this is not what we call a breakout of pristine, but you did break above a prior high, right? Boom, boom, boom. But then if I take and I notice what I did there, I just kind of tilted this down. It's the same pattern, but slightly tilted down. Now the same question, are these still breakouts? Well, now they're looking uglier and uglier, right? And at some point, these breakouts you're buying actually are becoming simply sideways trends that are tilted a little bit tunnel, whatever you want to call it, and a lot of people don't recognize that, okay? 
So understanding all these differences, guys, again, in, in 45 minutes, very hard to go through everything I like to go through with you. But I want to give you a little sampling of you know, who I am, what Pristine is, what we teach, what we do. Um, and I hope, I hope you guys, it's not a breakout, no, it's not a breakout, it's not a breakout. So I hope you guys you know, appreciated uh, what I tried to do. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know. Feel free to email me if you want to. And, and please go to pristine.com. Go to pristine.com and simply sign up to go to our free webinars that are every evening at 4.15. And when you do that, you'll become part of the Pristine community. You'll get a couple emails with some free stuff on them. And you also, I'm doing this presentation. I agreed to let you guys email me. I'm, I'm Paul. I can't type in the room. Maybe somebody who can type could type for me, but it's simply Paul. Yeah, pristine.com, P-A-U-L. You can see pristine.com here, right? So it's just Paul, P-A-U-L at pristine.com is my email. If you'd like to send me something, let me know how you like to talk or um, Send me a, um, a trade or two if you want me to take a look at them. Okay, guys. Thanks for being here. You were a spectacular group. You guys sound like a bunch of good traders. You had a lot of great comments. I need to get off the mic for our next presenter. Thank you all. Have a great trading day.